Okay, I wanted to show how to use uh, object arrays, because I think that's a really common thing for a lot of students to work with, and especially in C++ arrays can be kind of confusing as far as how uh, dynamic <coughs> memory works and all sorts of things like that with pointers and memory references. So, um, so for this video, I think I'm going to use just a basic structure and not a class, and maybe I'll make another one of uh, uh, class arrays. Um, or different ways of implementing them. So uh, to get started here, we need to include our IL stream. And we need to say using namespace STD, right? All right, and let's just create, in the last video I made a student structure. I think I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make a struct called student and uh, the student, uh, I want to also include my string header here. And the student will have a ID. The student will have uh, the student will have a name, a string, a name. And the student will have I don't know why I was doing that. Doesn't matter. Anyways, a uh, student will also have a GPA. And then uh, we can also look at, maybe we'll do uh, classes here. We'll do struct uh, class. Maybe we'll get a little bit fancy here. And we have uh, int class. We have a ID for class. We have the class name, right? And we'll have the course. Uh, let's see, we'll have the string course number or something like that. Maybe. Okay, so here we will have a uh, we'll make a we'll make a class uh, array. So let's see. We need to declare our class here. And actually, I'm going to bring it above here because uh, order matters. Maybe not necessarily here because it's uh, in the header, but that's okay. Um, let's say classes. This needs to be a pointer. And so now the student will have a list of classes. And maybe we need to keep track of those classes. So we need to say uh, number of classes. So one way we can handle this is we can get input from the user and we can ask them, how many classes are you using? Or we could just set a static variable here where the number of classes is uh, by default something, and we could just say two for here. Uh, we'll say we'll set that equal to two. So um, in this case, we'll say student, and I'm just going to say a uh, student here, and struct class. I'm going to say student student, and I don't need to do the new here. And I'm going to say student dot class or uh, that classes equals new, and we're going to say class, and we need to tell it how many, and it'll be student dot number of classes. That's how many we're going to be. That's how many there's going to be. And now we can make a for loop here, and we can say int i equals zero. I uh, less than student dot number of classes increase by one. Oh, I forgot my indexer here. And then we will ask them, we will say, uh, let's see, we'll say student dot classes I. And we will have to uh, set some information here. So CN, we need to display C out class ID. Let's see, class ID we can assign. Let's just, uh, let's just, let's see, we have the class name. Let's just give it the class name. We won't worry about the course number. And we'll say see out 
please enter the course number. And then we'll get input from the user, student classes I dot name. And I should this should say name. See, I confused myself there. Whew. Alright. And they will input that for the two, and then we'll make another loop. And let's see. I is less than student dot number of classes. Right? And we'll say C out, and we'll just dis display the class name, and we'll do student dot classes i dot class dot name, right? And we also need to display the student name, student dot name. Right? We're going to display that. We're going to display the GPA of the student. Right? And we're going to output also the, uh, we, uh, we're going to output the ID. Right? And now we also need to declare our, uh, so this actually declares space for the classes, but we don't instantiate this. We actually need to say student dot classes i equals new class. What are, you, uh, what are you doing to me here? Maybe not. Maybe not for structures, actually. That would make sense, because there's no constructor. All right. Uh, so yeah, so there we go. So let's uh, build this really quick here. I'm going to start without debugging. And it's going to say, please enter the course name. And the course, will, this will be, let's see, ICS 240. And the next one will be 241. And, <laughs> which makes sense, we didn't give the student a name or anything like that. That's my fault. We'll say student dot name equals, again, we'll do Tim. Student dot GPA equals 3.5. And student dot ID will equal 10. So it'll be the same as the last video here. There we go. So now if I rebuild this, and I start without debugging you here. It's going to ask, enter the course name, ICS 240. And you can see, actually, a funny thing happened here. Um, a bug actually occurred. I don't want to. I don't want to show you guys quite yet how that works because that's a whole another slew of things. So I'm going to do ICS 240. I'm going to do ICS 241. There we go. So it displayed our information here. Uh, it. We entered our ICS 240, ICS 241, it displayed TIM, GPA, and then it displayed for each course. So that's really all there is to it for getting some user input. This kind of shows some user input here. We're getting, uh, we have a structure which has an array of another structure called class, right? We we're talking about how this holds data, which is great. Um, and essentially, we just created a little for loop here, and we said for the number of classes that the student is taking, we want you to enter in the name of the class. And then we're going to display the class information that you entered, as well as the static variables of the student. So, all right, and I think that concludes this video.